Hey, fellow thinkers, welcome to this week's episode of the Thinking Podcast. I'm your host, Jeffrey Wu. As you guys all know, intermittent fasting has really taken off in, 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 in the cultural milieu these days. We, our, our fasting group has over a thousand plus people in our Slack channel, literally just chatting and trading tips about fasting. Uh, you know, mainstream publications like Vanity Fair, Fortune Magazine have covered our group and, and intermittent fasting in general as a regimen to optimize their inputs, optimize performance in the workplace, but also uh, their own bodies. And it's crazy to see that, you know, on a recent Business Insider front page, it was, you know, President Obama, Airbnb, you know, intermittent fasting, and like a, a snapshot on our breakfast with like me, you know, stuffing, you know, egg yolks down my face to other people in our community and, and Uber. And I'm excited to bring uh, Sumaya into this conversation. So Sumaya Kazi is the CEO, co-founder of Sumazi, uh, a social media uh, management software uh, a suite. And she's also an accomplished entrepreneur, uh, winning multiple rewards and uh, recognition in, in a, a plethora of different publications. And I think she's especially compelling because we at, at Nutribox, at WeFast, we always get asked, you know, you know, a lot of uh, our community members happen to be male. And I think that biohacking and intermittent fasting should be for everyone. The benefits are clear for everyone. And it's not that it's just only for men or only for women. It's just like, ho I hope, you know, reporters can you know, dig and, and dive a little bit deeper and, and find the women who are doing intermittent fasting and seeing awesome results. And yeah, Sumaya had had a viral, you know, how to intermittent fast guy that received over 20,000 views you know, 300 recommendations on Medium and is getting syndicated across a bunch of different uh, networks. So, you know, I want to welcome Sumaya and, uh, you know, let's let's get started and dive into, you know, how you got into intermittent fasting and a little bit about your reg regime and, and the results you've seen. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Um, like I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, I am very new, I still feel like, to intermittent fasting. I started it officially in December of last year. Uh, I actually heard about it uh, years ago uh, through the weightlifting community. So I used to be really into weightlifting and heard about it, heard about lean gains, heard about this term intermittent fasting. And I looked into it and then I kind of just stopped because uh, I didn't go further with it because a, a couple of reasons. One, it, it sounded complicated at the time. Uh, and when I was weightlifting, I was thinking about eating enough food and right. protein and just kind of adding another layer to it seemed complicated. It seemed like bulking, right? Like I think for a lot of weightlifters, it's all about like enough protein, enough yeah. bulking. Yeah. And so that was happening. And then I was just dealing with a crazy startup schedule. And additionally, uh, you know, I, truth be told, when I Googled intermittent fasting, uh, everything that I did see were pictures of men. Um, with six packs of abs and like talking about weightlifting and fitness and that sort of thing. And it didn't, you know, while I was into fitness at the time and weightlifting at the time, I, I couldn't identify with those images and those stories. And so I, I think that was probably another reason why I didn't kind of jump into it at the time. And then fa uh, uh, in November, December of last year, a friend of mine, uh, Daniel, who's an entrepreneur, uh, had posted his story of how he had lost 60 pounds during intermittent fasting. And he shared a story of, you know, being a family man, recently having a daughter, wanting to lose weight. And that story resonated better with me because for me, I was overweight and technically considered obese uh, at the time of reading this article in this blog post. And I thought, okay, if a friend of mine can do this and he kind of detailed it of his journey, then maybe this could work for me. Right. So I started doing a little bit of research and kind of jumped in, uh, met with my doctor and then jumped into it. So that's kind of how I got started. Very cool. Uh, but it was just about eight months ago. Yeah, I think it's like very interesting how there's different motivations for intermittent fasting. A lot of our community out there, it does, we do intermittent fasting for cognitive performance and performance gains. And I think a big segment of the population that's interested in intermittent fasting is for weight loss, weight management. I think, as you mentioned, I mean, two thirds of Americans are overweight, obese, which is a crazy number. And this seems to be, you know, one of the easiest, or I guess cheapest, protocols, interventions to really affect, you know, health outcomes. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. And I think truth be told, I didn't expect very much or anything. You know, I have tried everything you can possibly imagine. Jenny Craig's, Weight Watchers, meal prep, right. weightlifting four to five times a week, 
salsa dancing, eating well. I mean, I've, I've tried it all. I've always been conscious of um, being healthy, but every year my weight kept increasing five pounds. And then when I started in the startup world, it was increasing 10 pounds a year. Wow. And uh, it was just getting really scary. And uh, so I didn't really know what to do. What do you think that was from? Was it you know stress from working long hours? Mm. Was it just like constantly snacking? Because, you know, in, in Silicon Valley, we're known to have just free snacks everywhere in our faces. You know, I think it's a combination of things. I, you know, in college, I gained the freshman 15 and then another 10 before graduating. Uh, I, I grew up skinny, so I knew what it was to be on the skinnier <laughs> side. So seeing myself kind of gain weight was always like, oh, I know what it felt like not to be. Right. And then, uh, you know, it was kind of the normal mid-20s, like gain, you know, gain some weight because you're eating out and going out and traveling, that sort of thing. It's when I started starting my company, that's when... I wasn't sleeping very much. I was, you know, stressed all the time. And it wasn't so much always bad stress. It was also good stress as well. Um, And I was snacking late at night. I wasn't as conscious of what I was putting into my body. And uh, ultimately, you could probably map all of our milestones, good and bad. I mean, all the bad things as well as all the positive milestones with weight gains. There was never kind of a weight loss with something good that was happening. (laughs) It was always so, you know, it would just continuously happened okay and then I think I just got used to what I look like and how I felt and didn't realize that I was somebody different years ago I mean I've been so the new norm was like an overweight version of yourself and it was that's interesting right because I feel like I mean your sense of self evolving that drastically yeah I mean we all see ourselves every single day so each daily change is very subtle yeah but it, it must be crazy to be like okay my picture you know, in high school is way different from what I look now. And I think the thing is, it's, it's, you know, it's very relevant in kind of the startup and entrepreneurial world, but, you know, ever since I started sharing my story and intermittent fasting, so many people have reached out. I mean, these are moms and parents of three, four kids, one kid even, you know, I don't even know, I, I don't know how they do it. I mean, right. it's constant, nonstop, people who are, you know, juggling multiple jobs, people who have crazy schedules. I mean, everybody's kind of dealing with this issue of how do I stay healthy, eat healthy, you know, and be healthy. So right. intermittent fasting isn't just about weight loss. I got introduced to it because of it, but I'm seeing so many other benefits. Exactly, like the cognitive of performance it. benefits, absolutely. Yeah, and I think, you know, as you know, some of the people that have done a little bit of research on intermittent fasting, there's multiple protocols for intermittent fasting. You know, for ourselves, we tend to do weekly 36 hour continuous fast on a weekly basis. And I, you, I know you do a four, three, uh, alternate day fast. Um, curious to hear about your protocol uh, at a high level. We'll obviously link to the Medium post. You can really dive into the details. But for people listening and are on their way to, to work and on their commute, what does that? What does your regimen look like? Yeah. So um, you know, I think that just to kind of step back with intermittent fasting. Um, I, what I was surprised about was I think a lot of people consider intermittent fasting itself a diet. And I've read that um, it's not what intermittent fasting is, isn't itself a diet. It's a, a window of when you eat and when you don't eat. The diet part comes in when you decide on what, what types of, what food types of food you yes. eat. So, you know, there's all these terms of keto and paleo and, you know, high, you know, high protein and low carbs. And, and so those are kind of the diet parameters. Um, so when I first started with intermittent fasting, I just wanted to keep it simple. I just knew myself, you know, I think ultimately when you're trying to lose weight, it's about calories in versus calories out. You know, you just, you know, especially in America, we eat a lot. Our portion sizes, one serving could really feed a family of six and we eat it ourselves. Yeah. A human system is, is like a computer system, right? If you have a lot of input, it has to go somewhere. So, um, when I, so my friend Daniel, who shared his blog post, he had done a lot of research and he was doing what was called 4-3. I also watched the BBC documentary about intermittent fasting and doing full day fasts. Right. Um, and that's kind of where alternate day fasting got popular. Right. This, uh, what I do is kind of a, a variation of it. So I do full day fasts. Um, so in a week, four days, I have full eat days and three days I do full fast days. Uh, they're non-consecutive fast days. So typically my schedule is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm doing fasting. Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays are my eat days. Now, people, when they hear that, that schedule, they're like, oh my goodness, how, how is that even possible? Um, so I, I think the, the misconception with 
fasting is starvation. People think fasting equals starvation. And uh, I share with people that who are concerned about that, that I actually eat a lot. I eat a lot of food my, on my four eating days. I'm eating basically well over my maintenance calories, like, you know, 1700 right. to 2000 calories on those days. And sometimes I don't even care, you know, because it's, I have such a deficit with my calories. So Monday, I, I typically Sunday night at 9 PM, I will start my fast, which means from 9 PM on, I don't eat anything and I don't drink anything outside of water pretty much i go to bed wake up and i'm essentially fasting throughout the day so i'm drinking coffee i'm drinking tea i'm drinking water these are zero calorie liquids yeah although so you know when i, when I said I, I try to keep it simple right. for me it's about getting through the actual fast right so i love my coffee and i love my creamer and i love my sugar right so there are some people that are like zero calories, don't do anything. And I'm like, I, I won't be able to get through a fast day without having coffee that I actually enjoy. So I'll sometimes, you know, like my, if I go to Starbucks and I get a iced grande coffee with half and half, right. uh, you know, that's probably like 120 yeah, typically, calories. Yeah, like less than 200 calories per day, yeah. you know, theoretically is considered like not breaking a fast. Yeah, and I, I think that when I see people so concerned, like, do I need to have a lot of coffee? And can I, will it break my fast? I mean, everybody's got different opinions right. and styles. For me, if I can get through my fast day and am happy. With 100 calories? I mean, that's still like a huge step up. It's from a huge consuming 2,000 deficit. calories. Yeah, yeah, it's a huge deficit. I mean, so just to kind of back up, I have started, I've done fasting since December 1st. Right. I've lost almost 52 pounds since then. Um, I've dropped about 45 inches from my body. I've lost 11% body fat. And I did it with having creamer in my coffee every single day, you know? So, and that's what I try to tell people. It's not so much about, it's black and white on how you do it. It's really about having a routine, sticking with it, um, and just doing it day by day. If you do intermittent fasting and you, you keep pursuing it on a day-to-day -day basis or a week-to-week -week basis, you're only going to see progress. Absolutely. I think, I think that's a great you know, snapshot on what a regimen can look like. Um, and I think the, the coffee and tea is a, a huge tip for our listeners out there where caffeine is a natural uh, appetite suppressant. So yeah, while you're at it, it, you get the energy kick from the coffee over the caffeine and it's like, you know, it starts mellowing out your appetite. Yeah, I mean, something that I do need to watch out for sometimes is, uh, you know, I can get reliant on coffee and right. caffeine. So I try to be at least aware of it. So I'm drinking more water. I love sparkling water on my fasting days. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, I don't want to get a caffeine headache as well because right. you aren't consuming food. Um, but I have figured out a way to, you know, offset yeah, cycle that, so. off caffeine. Like don't, yeah. Yeah. Don't so get my, dependent on that. my fast days, I typically have a coffee, maybe like 10, 9, 10 in the morning, maybe have another one at three or 4 PM. Um, but that's all I'm having coffee, water, tea, sparkling water throughout the day. Uh, I might get a, a hunger pain or two. I don't have it as often now. I, I actually look forward to fasting days now. I don't exactly. really. Same with a lot of our community members, yeah. right? It's like a it's like a reset to the week almost, a reset to the your, yeah. your daily like routine. I, I actually look forward to it. I like it, uh, and I'll explain kind of how what the differences that I see with myself. But then, uh, so I go through the day, I go to bed, um, and then I wake up the next morning, Tuesday morning, and at nine in the morning I break my fast. So my schedule is nine p.m. to nine a.m. thirty six hours. You know, I, I mentioned 36 hours to people and they freak out. They're like, oh my goodness, 36 <laughs> hours sounds forever. I'm like, I'm sleeping 16 of those hours, right. if you think about it. Yep. Um, and the rest of the time, you know, and by the time I wake up to break my fast, I'm actually not even hungry, really. Yeah. You know, it's I kind of slowly get into it. Uh, I, I think yeah. one thing that you mentioned, which is important, is that you sort of let loose or do whatever you want on your feeding days, which I think is an important distinction from like a very strict diet where you have to you know, stick to a routine for the rest of your life. I think that's very hard to be consistent 100% for the rest of your life. But if you can be like, hey, I'll be disciplined for only, you know, three days a week or four days a week, that seems very sustainable for, for the rest of your life, right? Yeah, well, I definitely, I, I do call intermittent fasting a lifestyle. I don't see myself not doing intermittent fasting in the future. It's right. not like I hit a, a weight loss goal, then I'm done. I actually right. really love intermittent fasting for so many different reasons. Um, but yeah, of my four eating days, I, I find myself kind of three of those days are usually on the healthier side. You know, I'm you know at the office, at home, yeah, I'm able to kind of control what meals right. I have, and I have kind of a routine now. 
Uh, I love Sprig, for example, you know, on, on yeah, does your relationship meals. with food change? Cause I think when we started fasting, um, me personally, my relationship with food definitely changed from like, Hey, uh, there's snacks around. I should, you know, nibble on them to like, Hey, am I actually hungry? Should I actually be consuming these calories? And your body's like, well, I'm, I'm not actually hungry. It's more of like a mental crutch. My relationship with food has completely changed. Um, yeah. so I've, you know, in addition to losing a lot of weight, I've also saved a lot of money. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not eating half the week as much. Um, but in a way, I'm also kind of spending a little bit more money because I really have this great new appreciation for food. Everything tastes amazing now in a way that it didn't before. Right. Um, and because I have my eating days on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and the weekends, I actually tend to make plans with friends or do meetings on those days. Yeah, I um, notice you, have, you keep Saturday and Sunday open. So yeah. yeah, I mean, I think you gotta plan out that fast in a way that actually works yeah. for your life, right? Like I think it's hard if you're like, hey, I'm gonna fast on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, if you're gonna go out on weekends, you're not gonna be able to stick to that. Yeah, well, and also with full day fast, you couldn't fast Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You can't do consecutive, right. you know, it just wouldn't be would, wouldn't be good. So yeah, so I have team meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I mean, every and and it's interesting because even from like the the startup side and even working with customers, uh, sometimes I'll you know want to meet on another day and I'll actually mention actually you know I'm I'm, I'm I'll, I'll throw out intermittent fasting. Um, you know, do do you mind if we can meet on this day or you know we can meet up for lunch or you know right. uh, just heads up about you know. Have your colleagues started intermittent fasting? Have you personally you know started you know, become a proponent? <laughs> well, I've never pushed intermittent fasting okay. on anyone. I think it's it's got to be kind of a mental, you're ready for this. And that's with anything. Intermittent fasting isn't this kind of revolutionary, crazy, magical thing. It is a protocol. It's a, a, a routine, a way that you can pursue a healthy lifestyle. For me, intermittent fasting just happens to be the easiest and most manageable way to do it. Right. Um, and so what started happening is, you know, in the first month or two, I started losing 10, 15 pounds and my siblings were like, oh, this is interesting. Maybe I'll try results, it with you. Yeah. So they, they came on board. Then my mom came on board. Then two of my best friends came on board. And then I started sharing it with, you know, like, you know, people were asking, they started noticing the difference. They started sharing it. And then I posted around my birthday a couple months ago, oh, hey, by the way, I lost 50 pounds. You know, this is how it happened and so excited. And that's when I just got ambushed with so many questions. Everybody wanted to know. Um, and then since then, I would say at least 100 plus people have reached out personally and said, I've started intermittent fasting. I've lost 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 25 pounds, you know, from people around the world, which has been crazy. Yeah, I think that's, I think it reflects our experience, right? I think that... Um, so I like what you said about it's, you know, the intermittent fasting is a feeding or eating protocol. If you think about, you know, the day, the typical eating, you know, three meals a day, et cetera, that's really just an eating protocol. Like when we were, you know, from an evolutionary biology perspective, it wasn't, you know, you know, God defined or, you know, somehow divinely defined, Hey, we're supposed to eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. That it was a protocol sort of created by industrial revolution where people had to have factory shifts, you know, eight hour shifts, have three square, you know, working shifts in a day. And let's make that most efficient. And, and by basically feeding three people three times a day. So when I do explain intermittent fasting, I do share that most people already do some kind of form of intermittent fasting without realizing it. Right. You know, they, when they go to bed, they're technically fasting, Correct. you know, if they're sleeping for eight hours and they're eating the rest of the period. So what intermittent fasting is, is about shifting those periods of this is when I'm going to be eating, this is when I'm not going to be eating, giving, giving your time, giving your body the time to kind of process all the food that you've just had, give it some time. You know, in my mind, when I deal with the hunger pain, I tell myself it, I have more than enough fat for my body to get and process to get energy. Right. And it's just literally my body going to war <laughs> with my fat. My fat is losing. And that has helped kind of motivate me through hunger Autophagy, pain. Autophagy, yeah. Breaking yeah. down bad cells. I yeah. Think, exactly. But it's, um, you know, when I explain to my friends what it is, and, and, and also I kind of share that most major religions have some kind of form of fasting. This intermittent fasting isn't kind of this new, it's not this... I mean, we're probably hearing about it more now uh, just because it's getting in the news and becoming a little bit more mainstream, but intermittent fasting has been around for thousands of years. Right. 
it's been practiced by you know prominent philosophers and you know major religions and it's it's not something new it's just now there's kind of a term around it right and i would say but but what is new is the science and the clinical results from caloric restriction so i think that's what's fueling the resurgence of intermittent fasting uh as more of in the mainstream right like you know, there's interesting data that show caloric restriction, you know, having longevity benefits, uh, potential, um, you know, boosting performance against chemotherapy when uh, on cancer patients, uh, increasing insulin sensitivity. So for people that are diabetic, you know, you, 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 your insulin isn't as responsive to insulin, so you can't break down sugars. But intermittent fasting will increase the sensitivity of your body to, to insulin. So like a lot of these performance benefits are being shown in the last several years, which is, I think, fueling the resurgence into these sort of, as you mentioned, sort of old school religious practices. Yeah. Well, I mean, my family is Muslim. I grew up fasting through Ramadan. Exactly. So I'm not necessarily completely brand new to it. And I think right. that my kind of adoption with it was probably a little bit easier than some people that get started with it, just because I think fasting is also kind of a mental uh thing that you kind of take on right. and at a very early age I was introduced to it on some level uh, it's still not easy you know I, I wouldn't say fasting or in fasting is an easy thing to do um, but it's something that once you start doing it and it's like any kind of habit you bring on the habits your body starts getting used to it uh, it's easier to, to manage I think right. is you know or mental mentality wise easier to kind of handle better Right. And so now it's, that's why I can look forward to it. And that's why I know what to expect. And that's why I've been able to do it for eight months. And Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I mean, I think just diving more into your personal experience, we get a lot of questions from uh, our listeners and also reporters covering the space, how intermittent fasting, you know, may affect men differently from women, right? Like, you know, our hormone processes are, are just different from between genders. Um, and a lot of the theory behind that is that women's bodies are more sensitive to uh, hormonal changes by uh, having enough, you know, nutrients and calories in the system. And you know, from an evolutionary biology ex explanation, um, if you know someone is in a famine state, uh, it's not the ideal time to have babies, and so therefore, you know, a lot of that reproductive process is sort of shut down. So I'm curious, um, from your experience or just speaking generally. Have you noticed any, you know, downsides or things to be careful about during protocols? Because some of the literature and some of our, uh, you know, members just tend to go for a shorter fast just to, you know, not trigger some of the negative effects of, you know, caloric restriction. Yeah, um, that's an important question. I think, like I said, when I first started, there wasn't a lot about I didn't see a lot of images or content coming from women. Right. Uh, it was a lot of all the kind of guides that were out there around lean gains and were on, um, you know, weightlifting and competing in weightlifting or that sort of thing. Uh, and um, I, I did research and then I went to my doctor because I, you know, I didn't want to do something that was unhealthy. And I did blood tests beforehand and all that kind of stuff. I also had read literature about it might affect your menstrual cycle. It might affect your, you know, like your moods and during those times of months and stuff like that. So um, an interesting kind of thing about intermittent fasting for me is that while I, I do keep it very loose and laid back and chill about it, I actually also have kind of a data driven approach to this as well. So I have a spreadsheet where I've been tracking 277 days of intermittent fasting. So I track the weight, my body fat, um, you know, like uh, overall The quantified calories. self biohacker ethic. You're not just, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's not just like, hey, it's a hobby. It's like, hey, I'm going to track and be quantitative. It was here. just, yeah, I was, engineering, I was kind you know, of started, curious. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then also uh, every day I would just write a quick one liner about how I was feeling or if there's something kind of interesting that happened during that day. And it was just more of like a, a really quick diary entry of intermittent fasting. I didn't know what to expect from it. Um, and so I bring this up because I've gotten this question asked multiple times, usually from women <laughs> who are worried right. how this will affect. Every woman's body is different. So my experience cannot be kind of shared with everybody else and they say, oh, just because it happened for Samaya, it'll happen for me. Um, women in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s all are dealing with different changes. Right. So for me personally, uh, that I haven't yet experienced any negative effects. Um, if anything, I've had my lowest weight check-ins around my cycle. 
I, I've never even talked about my cycle publicly ever before, so this is crazy. <laughs> but I'm only talking about it because I know so many women are curious yeah. about this. Um, there shouldn't be any stigma. I, it's, just a, it's a natural <laughs> process that more than half of humans deal with on, like, on like a monthly cycle. Just yeah, like, so I actually I used to have really bad cramps. I don't have bad cramps anymore. I used to feel really bloated. I don't feel that way anymore. I you know would probably weigh the most during that period of time, and I usually have huh. my lowest weight weigh in check ins. Um, I don't have a lot of the negative effects that typically happen. Now, truth be told, if 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 you were to look at me before intermittent fasting, during the cycle times, I was probably eating a lot more. I was probably taking in a lot more junk food. I was probably drinking a lot more crap. And so that probably- Interesting confounding factors. Led right. to that, you know? It's not so much just the cycle. So when I look at kind of my spreadsheet and I look at those times, it was just kind of this consistent thing. I was really surprised by it. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I, it, I get approached by women who uh, recently had children and they're advised not to until they're done with breastfeeding. Everybody should talk to their doctors about right. this. Everybody's got different health things that they need to be concerned concerned about. Women who are pregnant definitely should not be fasting. Women who are considering, you know, getting pregnant should definitely talk to their doctors. You know, every stage. Exactly. You don't want to, you know, put your body into a starvation mode where it's like, you know, affecting, you know, your yeah. pregnancy, etc. Yeah. I think and, that's exactly and right. For me, it's just I I treat intermittent fasting as a lifestyle, but also as an experiment. So I'm, I'm doing things like, oh, let me try eating a little bit more protein towards my last meal to see if I feel more satiated on my fasting days. Um, when I'm traveling, maybe I change up my schedule a little bit. Um, when something comes up, how do I adjust? So, you know, for me, it's still a work in progress. I'm still figuring things out, but um, yeah, I think- Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think, I think what you mentioned was really important, like the N equals one case study. Right, I think the holy grail of biohacking is how can you correlate your genetic information, which is personal to each of us, by our environmental variables, like your fast, like different diet protocols or nootropics or other things that you could be doing, um, and coming with like a personalized regimen, right? So I think exactly, as you mentioned, like we're all N equals one case studies of our different experiments. Um, and I think it's good to sort of inspire, hey, like the, th this is the results that we're seeing and hopefully inspire some other people to look you know, more thoughtfully into their own protocols because if you're not making a decision on the protocol, it's being des decided for you by like mainstream society of pushing like, you know, Cheerios in the morning and McDonald's in the evening, right? So yeah, be thoughtful. Don't necessarily just like accept you know, the American Western norm. Well, also even with intermittent fasting, so I, I shared it, you know, to my network recently and it, it got a lot of interest and I try to explain to as many people as possible that intermittent fasting, what I love about it is it's so, you can make it work for you. Right. So I do four, three, which is four days of eating, three days of fasting, because that works for me. Right. I like having full fast days. The most common part of intermittent fasting is something called 16-8, which is 16 hours where you're fasting and eight hour, you know, feeding window. And, um, but you know, for me that, that doesn't really work. I experiment yeah, with think about the, that, that's basically just like skipping breakfast. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think the reason why it doesn't work for me personally, and I've tried to experiment it with it is one, I think when you are doing fit fast every day, right? So it's not a full day fast. It's a partial day fast but you have to be more strict about what you're eating. You're, you have to eat at a caloric de deficit. So, right. you know, I, I mentioned to my friends, you know, look at what your TDEE is, which is your total daily energy expenditure. You can go on Google, you can look up TDEE calculator and you'll, you'll, you'll get that number. Right. So when you look at what that maintenance number is, if you're doing a partial day fast every day, you want to eat at a deficit if you're right. trying to lose weight. Right. So if your TDEE is 2000, you'll probably want to eat like, I don't know, I'm just throwing out a number 1800 or 1700 right. every day, but that means you need to know what you're eating, how much you're eating, use my fitness pal to track it, just be more right. regimented about it. The reason why I like full day fasts is I don't really need to think about that because I'm not on my eating days. I'm not eating at a deficit. I'm eating my full calories I'm right. eating 1700, 2000 calories. I'm not do eating at a deficit. It's reducing the like, cognitive decision making, right? Like you just, you're just like, okay, the protocol is defined. I just follow this thing I've already previously said, I don't need to make like snap decisions anymore. So I don't, I don't need to track on my right. fitness pal. I don't need to count my calories. I, you know, I have a sense of how much I'm eating. I can't sometimes even eat 2000 calories right. if I wanted to now because my stomach has kind of shrunk in kind of what it can consume. And so I just don't think about it. And because I, I don't have to be as regimented right. about it, 
that's why it works for me. Versus 16 8, if I'm not tracking it, I can easily overeat. Yeah. And then and then I'm back to, you know, where I was. I want to be a devil's advocate here. You know, I think a lot of people would be like, "Hey, these people just have eating disorders." Okay. <laughs> and I think that's like, you know, we get asked that question and, you know, I'm I'm curious, you know, if someone, you know, I'm sure people are like, hey, you guys have eating disorders. You know, what's what's your response to that? What, what, how would you, you know, describe the difference between, hey, we're, you know, on some weird eating disorder versus, hey, this is a thoughtful intermittent fasting protocol that I'm sticking to? I have a couple opinions on that. One, I feel like what I was doing before intermittent fasting would be considered an eating disorder. <laughs> I was eating way too much. I was eating way too much crap. I wasn't caring about what I was eating. I was unhealthy. Both my parents are diabetic. I was essentially you know on my way there and I was gaining 10 pounds a year and I didn't know when that was gonna end you know it was a bad situation for me um, I'm eating how much I should be eating right now and this is just a way to help me framework that now that being said this is something that if people don't do correctly could be I mean with anything with any kind of diet you could take something and be bad at it and right. that's not healthy so you know when I do get approached from friends or friends of friends who express their interest I do actually take some extra time to talk them through it because for two reasons I think it's really important to one have a support network and accountability network so I think that's why the we fast breakfast are really great and the slack channel is really great I'm part of three uh, four intermittent fasting support groups. Wow. Um, yeah. One is with my siblings. Uh, we have a Facebook uh, like small chat uh, just with the siblings, and we share kind of our updates week to week. One is with two of my best friends, and that's through a WhatsApp like texting conversation where we just keep each other accountable. Um, I'm part of a intermittent fasting group on Facebook, which has been amazing. And there's like 22,000 members in that group, people from around the world. And then there's a group of just women. Um, and it's uh, women intermittent fasters that I yeah, discovered. Yeah, I think that's a great tip for people out there listening, just having people around you to, yeah. to just balance opinions. Yeah, so curious about other uh, things that you may have noticed you know, after intermittent fasting. Is it, you know, you know a lot of us from a, like a biohacker perspective, like intermittent fasting from a performance or cognitive clarity perspective. I'm curious if you've noticed like additional productivity gains um, or is it like, hey, this is like mainly like a weight loss, weight management tool for me? When I first started, it was, well, one, I didn't think it was going to do anything. Okay. So when the weight started kind of flying off, I was like, oh, okay, this works. I wonder how long it's going to work. I was very, yeah. very not expectant of anything that was going to happen with intermittent fasting. And then I started noticing some changes. Uh, I noticed that on my fasting days, I had a lot of, uh, a lot more mental clarity. I was really focused just like from, I would say eight, nine in the morning to maybe like one, 2 PM was my most productive time. I could literally power through everything. I would start getting tired a little bit after that, but then caffeine kind of kicks in and helps, but um, more so on my eating days. I feel more productive on my fasting days. Um, I have noticed though that I used to, I mean, this is a good thing, but also kind of, it took a while for me to adjust, but I go to bed early, much earlier now. I used to go to bed at two, three in the morning constantly and wake up at six, seven in the morning constantly. Now I'm in bed by like 10, 11 p.m. I, 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 you know, it's just, I'm just low energy right. at that, at that point, but it's been good because I'm actually getting Is it easy for you to fall asleep. I know it's a little bit harder for me to fall asleep when I'm like on a fasted day. Just my experience. I don't notice it as much anymore. I think it's, uh, if I'm, if for some reason I have a hunger pain that's happening, then yeah, it's a little bit right. tougher, but I don't, I don't get that as much anymore. I don't, at least I'm not aware of it. If okay. I'm aware of it, I, I probably brush it off, but yeah, early on, I definitely had trouble sleeping. My right. body was growling, you know, it wasn't happy, I wanted to get fed, that sort of thing. I right. tell friends that are interested in starting that, hey, the first two, three weeks are gonna be the toughest time ever. Your body is not gonna be happy with you, it's gonna be struggling. If you can get through those first, you know, nine, 10 fasts, then it it gets becomes more manageable, it becomes yep. easier to do. Um, but yeah, I, I go to bed earlier, which means I'm actually sleeping. And I, it's good for me. And it's funny because I've, sometimes I've like weighed myself just throughout the right. day. I don't do it on a regular basis, but I was curious. So, you know, weighed myself, you know, in the morning and then before I went to bed and I have the biggest kind of weight loss during the time I'm sleeping. 
Interesting. So from like 10 p.m. to, you know, 10 in the morning, that's when the biggest kind of jump happens. Huh. Um, so, you know, when that's I get probably really like tired. your deepest into autophagy and ketosis, I guess. And then like <laughs> you're like breathing out your extra carbons. So here's yeah. the other thing uh, related to eating disorders. Um, just it, it's tied to both. So I do daily tracking uh, through my spreadsheet. So as a result of it, I'm weighing myself every single day. It's not necessarily advised for people who are doing a 4-3 style of fasting. I don't think anybody needs to weigh themselves every single day. Right. I think week to week or every couple of weeks is probably the healthiest and the best. I do it every day because I'm tracking it and I'm curious to see what kind of upswings and downswings, um, patterns, that sort of thing. And so, um, and I take it to the extreme where when I'm traveling, I bring my scale with me because I haven't missed 277 days of tracking. So that's, that's commitment. Some people might be that's like, discipline. okay, that sounds strange and <laughs> odd, but for me it's, it's, but you know, I have this spreadsheet. It's being quantitative. It's being thoughtful about yeah. it. Yeah. And I'll, I'll even just show it to you really quick, but, um, it's, it basically has the day, the week, the date, um, what my weight is. Uh, I have kind of my own goal, what my loss, um, what percentage completion I'm at, what my body fat is, what my muscle mass is. And these are things that I get from my scale. And then, how much you know yeah, this, in, I mean this is an organized ways if I mean we'd love to link that and share it out to the people in our community <laughs> if, so uh, well, then if they're you, curious to see you know how you organize your information I mean I think it's it's helpful to have these tools to, to be again but also like you rigorous. can see at a glance that the, the red lines are ones where there's a, an increase in weight and then the black lines are when there's a decrease so okay. the increase in weight is natural when you're doing a 4-3 style of fasting because after you eat day you're gonna Right. put on some weight from your food and then after your body has processed it and got you know has used it for energy then you're gonna see a decrease so right. you know when friends are doing it and they start weighing themselves on a regular basis I, it's something that's important for them to know right. that that that's gonna be a natural process you don't want to actually you don't I don't think you, yeah you don't expect like a monotonically decreasing <laughs> which is not natural yeah if you're eating awesome these are great tips um, I want to close off this uh, episode and, and thank our guest, Sumaya. Um, you know, I think she stands as a awesome case study for a lot of people out there. As she mentioned, there's not necessarily a lot of women out there doing intermittent fasting. And I think that there should be more examples for people that are doing it well, doing it thoughtfully and doing it in a way that's positive and, 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 and not, not too scary, right? I think it's, it's people that aren't too different from any of us uh, being disciplined and, and, and pulling off amazing results. So thanks for your time. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Appreciate cool. it. All thanks. right.